it's February and Mother Nature has been playing a trick on us and giving us glimpses of a fake spring. Don't fall for it. It's a trap. I'm just kidding. But these sunny days we've been experiencing has many people getting anxious to start their spring garden. If you are like me when I got back into gardening in 2019, you might be thinking, how do you create a beautiful, productive, organic vegetable garden on a very low budget? I did exactly that in my small backyard over four years ago. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I did it and how you can too. Today, we're going to discuss the how, the why, the who, the what, and the where of starting your first garden. I want to show you some mistakes that I made over the years and hopefully help you think through those things so that you don't waste time or money making the same mistakes that I did. However, I do value your time. And if you are not a detail person like me, there will be time codes in the description. So feel free to jump ahead to the good stuff. In 2019, I was a single mom on a very tight budget and up to my ears in debt. I was trying so hard to manage my fibromyalgia pain while also trying to lose weight. I knew my body responded best to a clean diet, but it can be very difficult to buy healthy food when you are drowning in debt like I was. I had a great job and made really good money, but my medical bills had been draining me for several years. That was the year I decided I would finally make time to start gardening again. I had not had a vegetable garden since my divorce in 2011, although I loved growing my own food. But when we bought this house in 2013, I was a single mom working full time, sometimes two or three jobs at a time just to make ends meet because I didn't receive child support or anything like that. So I never had the time available to do a garden like I used to. But in 2019, all of that would change when I decided to start with just a few small beds. I was at my dad's shop one day, and he had all this wood piled up in there. I asked him if I could have a few pieces, and that's how I built my first three beds. I didn't even have a drill at the time. I had to borrow my dad's. But he did have a saw there at his shop, so he cut the wood to the size I requested, and there wound up being enough to cut six pieces at a four-foot length and six pieces at a two-foot width, and that was the beginning of this transformation. If you are new to gardening, one of the first things you need to think about, particularly with a vegetable or herb garden, is where it should be located. There are three important things to consider. The first thing to think about is location. You want to make sure you start your garden in an area that is easy to access, but particularly you want it close to the kitchen so that it isn't inconvenient to run out to the garden to grab something while you're cooking. The second thing to consider is your water source. Make sure you can access water easily and decide how you will be watering the garden. I strongly suggest installing drip irrigation at some point, but we'll discuss that aspect later. It's not something I added until year two. The third thing to consider is certainly not the least important. In fact, it's probably the most important. But you have to determine how much sun your chosen area receives each day. I'm going to show you more about that in just a moment. First, I want you to notice where these three beds are located in proximity to the back patio and the rock retaining wall that divided the yard in half and made it feel much smaller than it really is. If we zoom in right here, you'll notice that I did position these three beds right outside of my kitchen door, and that is the window over my kitchen sink. And my water source is just outside of the frame where that yellow arrow is pointing. I want to show you this aerial view of my house right here. This is just from Google Images. As you can see, my house faces east, and you'll see the three cars in the driveway there. What I'm wanting you to notice is that our main garden is up here in the northwest corner of our backyard. And then I also want you to notice that we have five neighbors whose fences touch ours. Well, most people would have a neighbor on either side and then one neighbor in the back. We actually back up to two cul-de-sacs. 
So house number one and number two are in one cul-de-sac, and then house number three is in another cul-de-sac, and they all just happen to touch my fence. So what I'm wanting you to notice is in the photos, as you see, you'll notice that we have multiple different fences around our yard because it's five different neighbors. And we all have dogs and every one of our dogs like to bark at each other and try to fight through the fence. So we are constantly replacing fence panels. And that has become an issue, especially across the backside, where it's just all mismatched. And that is something that we are probably going to tackle this year in 2024. So I want you to notice those fence lines as you look at these photos, and then you'll have a good idea of what our plan is when we show that to you in the next video. By September of 2019, I realized those three little beds weren't going to cut it. I had gotten so busy working all the time and just trying to survive, I had forgotten how much I actually loved gardening. But at this point, I started collecting more free wood for my dad, and I got on Facebook Marketplace and found all kinds of free gardening supplies. And then one day, I had to run to Lowe's and pick up fence panels to replace where Rocky had busted through on the side yard. And when I realized those were only $1.98 each, it gave me the idea to build this six foot by four foot bed in my main garden, as well as two six foot by two foot beds against the fence line for my blackberry bushes and a few other plants. Now, before we go any further, I want to point out this northeast side of the yard here. But what I want you to know is that right now it currently houses our three rain barrels several compost bins, and a shed. And I just think it's so amazing to look back on and realize how small that space seemed before. I also want to point out to you this area right here that we call Sunflower Hill. You'll hear me refer to that often, and I just want you to notice how small it seems right there. Now, let me back up right here and say this was the end of 2019, and as I started making plans to expand the garden for the following year, I went and dug my old garden fence out of storage. This is the same fence I had used around my garden in my previous home prior to 2011. But as I laid out my plans for the following year, I realized I did not want the hassle of trying to mow or weed eat around all of those beds. That's when I priced out the cost of a load of gravel. I got three tons delivered to me for $100 back in 2020. You can see in these images, I was beginning to lay out my future terrace garden or sunflower hill. I researched terrace gardens and didn't really find a lot of ideas of what I could do on this hilltop corner all by myself without hiring someone. So I decided to try landscape timbers first. I saw it on Pinterest and the timbers were under $5 each, so I bought four eight foot timbers and then I dug out about two foot of ground to create some depth in these beds. I also framed out the side of the main garden so that I could fill that up with lavender and some other pest deterrent plants. It wasn't long before I discovered I had a problem. Flooding. Massive flooding. I had taken over so much of the yard I had left nowhere for water to drain. And the lady that had done the landscape timber terrace garden on Pinterest probably didn't get as much rain as we get here in Oklahoma because my terrace garden got completely washed out. I constantly had an erosion issue where the soil just kept washing down into the main garden and keeping my gravel completely filthy. Before we go any further, I need to tell you about a few Christmas gifts that I got in the year of 2019 and 2020, my parents and my sister have been great at helping me stock the garden. I think it was 2019, my sister got me these cold frames, and my mom got me my first rain barrel. Unfortunately, I don't recommend this kind because it did collapse under the weight of the rain, and I'll show you a quick video on that. Thank you. 
we have since replaced those rain barrels, and we now have six total barrels. And then I also got my first compost tumbler back then. And one year, my parents got me drip irrigation to get me started. But before we get into all of that, if you are enjoying this video, would you please hit that like button? And even better, we would love for you to subscribe and stick around and hopefully check out more of our videos. So now let's talk more about that flooding issue. I decided to start putting pavers down. My parents had just purchased a new house and they had a bunch of pavers in the backyard that they weren't going to use. And so they let me take those. And then I also found several on Facebook Marketplace for free. So I got those without spending a dime. And then I also purchased this cute little bridge from Amazon. I believe at the time it was only $69. I think nowadays they're about hundred dollars, but I will share a link in the description if you're interested in that. And every time I tried to get over to the other side of the yard, I was so tired of walking in mud because of where the dogs would run and it just stayed so wet right there. So I created a pathway for myself. I also had a neighborhood friend that sold her house and moved to Florida. So before they left, they actually gave me all of their lawn and garden stuff, including lots of tools, lots of flower pots, some that even had plants in them, and this hammock. 2021 is also the year I started developing the South Garden. With the dogs keeping the yard very muddy, I had to create walking paths for myself in order to stay out of the mud. You can see I had to add gravel to the back end of the main garden, which was my pathway over to Sunflower Hill. I also started adding this garden path in eight-foot sections at a time as I had the money, so it took me a few months before I was able to complete the walkway. As I was laying my garden path, I hadn't fully thought all the way through how to keep this area easy to mow and weed eat. Eventually, I pulled out some plastic landscape edging I had in the garage, and I framed out the walkway and added gravel. I thought this would help me keep straight lines and make it easier to mow around, and it did, kind of. By 2022, I got the idea to replace the plastic edging and start laying down landscape timbers instead. It framed out the walkway so nicely, and I realized that's what I should have done from the beginning. I have so much more to share with you guys, and my computer keeps crashing because this file is way too large, so I need to end this video at this moment, but I will very quickly follow up with another section right after this, so Stay tuned for that, and I hope you will stick around and watch another video. Remember to go the second mile today for someone in your life and with your resources.